Hi, welcome to Derek Does. Today, we're gonna do this. So today, in my messy basement, we're gonna talk about this, the A2 jacket. If you're new to my site, I talk about a lot of vintage stuff for guys and girls too, I guess, uh, but it could be from clothing to tools to mopeds to sewing machines, all sorts of stuff that guys are kind of into. And one of the things I think every guy should at least look at, think about, is the A2 jacket. Now, the one I'm wearing right now, I'll show you. These are both reproduction jackets because it's very difficult to get originals. Now, uh, if you're lucky enough to find an original, hang on to it, get it, uh, unless it's crazy price. But for the most part, you can get one. Um, although you used to be able to get them for like 300 or something like that. And now they're gonna be close to probably a thousand for a reproduction. And if they are fancier, and when I say fancier, like there's a, uh, unit patch on it there's a name that you can go with sometimes they're painted on the back painted on the front those go way more than anything else really so the jacket i'm wearing particularly is from arrow uh this is in what they call a jerky horse hide uh, and that means that the hide itself has imperfections it's going to show a lot of grain it's um it's not smooth upholstery leather really uh it's jerky uh, which mimics more of what the jackets were from World War II of what this era of jacket is. And we'll get into the history of the A2 jacket in a bit. But the uh, I particularly, I've kind of grown into this type of jacket. I like the jerky horse uh, because if you look at early photographs of servicemen in their A2s, they had a lot of grain and everything. It's because when they were making jackets, and they would make them by the thousands, obviously, they took every hide they had and used it for making jackets for the war effort, really. So they would use every little bit of piece of leather they had to make the jacket. It would never be like what we would think of as a perfect jacket. You know, you get it and it's just all perfectly smooth. It's like a fancy couch. Rarely did that ever happen. Uh, so basically, uh, Back then, when they made the jackets originally, they would be in horse hide or they'd be in goat skin. I particularly like horse hide better than goat skin. I've had both uh, horse hide and goat skin jackets. Today, most jackets are all cow hide or steer hide in that range because there's just more of them, there's less horses. But think about in 1930 through 1940, every farmer had horses. Everyone rode horses. They still had horses. They had cars, but there was horses everywhere. So as the war effort war went on, and of course the invention of the tractor, kind of farmers were starting to get away from horses and getting into, so they had, getting into tractors, they had more horses that just were nothing to do really. Uh, and being the war, uh, horses obviously would be uh, sent to market and that sort of thing. And then they had lots of hide. Um, horse hide is very durable. Uh, it's, it's just really fantastic as a, a hide. It wears great, it looks great. You can tell instantly uh, when you're, you know, like if you're at a thrift store or a, a store that sells vintage clothing, when you see a horse hide jacket, they just pop. Uh, goat hide is a little different. It kind of looks the same, even from when it was fresh and when it's now. They don't really age quite like horse or even cowhide. They look pretty good throughout its entire life. They'll get some wear and tear, obviously, but they don't uh, get that patina, I guess, that horse hide does over time. I've had this jacket, I guess, probably two years now. Um, I had, I've had many jackets over the course of my jacket buying uh, everything. My first uh, jacket was probably in the late 90s, uh, also from Arrow. Uh, Arrow had a thing where you, they were much cheaper to buy back then, obviously, because everything was cheaper back then. Uh, and I would get um, jackets and I would upgrade. And I'm gonna show you uh, a jacket, actually it's about 20 years old, from Arrow, uh, what they call the anniversary jacket. And I'll show you that in a second here. But again, this is uh, in a seal brown. Uh, they also came in a lighter russet color. 
So the Seal Brown Arrow's unique uh, because they were a manufacturer in New York. Uh, most of the companies that made jackets were on the East Coast, but they were made originally there, and their main look, I guess, because every jacket manufacturer made them a little different. Even though they all were the same jacket, they each had different styles, how they made jackets, how they didn't make jackets, that even today, experts can go out and they can actually look at a jacket and just look at the collar or the collar stand, or they can look at how the uh, sides were done, and they'll know who made that jacket, even if the tag is missing. But Arrow had red cuffs, which their thing was usually a, a, a seal uh, brown with the, with the red cuffs. And Arrow uh, in Scotland, uh, who bought the rights to Arrow and reproduced, uh, they have a kind of exclusive because they own Arrow now. Uh, they kind of do that. And this is what this is. Here's the back. Um, give you a shot. I'll do some close-ups too, and you can see the hide. Uh, and how it changes. And this is just after a couple years of wear, it's already starting to really break in great and look look pretty good. Uh, but keep in mind, the, the guys that uh, originally got these jackets new, they really only wore them for a four year span of the war, but then after the war, they would take their jackets home and wear them. And, uh, but they, of course, they wore them every day in some really terrible conditions uh, where most guys today don't do that. They wear them when they go out and that's it. You know, they're not getting into cockpits and all that stuff. We won't get into all that. But uh, again, this is the arrow and I'll do a close up of this one and then I'll show you the other one I have. Um, here we go. All right. So here's a, just a close up of the jacket I was just wearing. As you can see, I'll show you the tag. Arrow. Most jackets always say type two, the drawing and, um, and then the contract number. Uh, tags are different. Originals uh, are always the same per the manufacturer, but uh, reproductions like this, uh, they uh, do what they want to do to do that. So here you can really see the grain popping. Uh, when I say jerky, you can really oh, pull that out. There's the red cuffs. These are wool cuffs. Uh, has a reproduction uh, talon zipper on it. I like to put stuff in the pocket just because they would have put stuff in the pocket back then and you can actually it does a nice little stuff around it so you know I've got my World War II lighter in here. Um, I think I showed you this on my previous uh, video. I need to fill it up. It's out. Uh, previous video on Zippos but that would be something. And then I also picked this up, which is kind of cool. Uh, this is the Acme Cricket, uh, which is what the paratroopers, when uh, they stormed uh, Normandy and all that stuff, they would have these. That's what the uh, Acme, they uh, found an original and Acme was able to reproduce. They originally made these. Uh, and I just keep a cricketer in there. Uh, my son has one too, so if we're at a mall or something, we can cricket each other. Uh, I also have my uh, Acme British Whistle, uh, the uh, Thunderer, uh, as you can see there. This was common uh, for uh, airmen to have uh, a whistle like that. So if they did have to bail and they were uh, in the sea or something like that, it was right here by their lips and then they could blow the whistle uh, to get help if needed. Uh, I have my name tag on it. Uh, Sometimes they would have them, sometimes they wouldn't. Uh, I don't have a patch on this one. I haven't decided what I was going to put on it. Uh, but then I've, I think I've got some candies or mints over on this side. Uh, they have a uh, cotton lining on it. Um, I think Arrow calls this the real deal. I think that's what they call it. These snap down, but rarely were they ever snapped down. Uh, I'll show you the back. So there's the back and like here you can see the grain is really going to pop over time. It's not smooth. And when you'll, you'll notice it when I show you my other jacket, uh, which was made from Arrow 20 years ago. And it has a much uh, thicker, uh, smoother hide, which at the time, that's what people wanted. Uh, they didn't want a, a beat up hide. And you can see the the color is really starting to pop, you know, as I wear it along the uh, wear areas, you can see the, 
the natural color of the leather underneath it. Not the natural, but the dyed color of the leather popping. Uh, and here you can really see the, the difference between the hide. Uh, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't even mind if this is even really or jerkier, jerkier. So this is my original jacket, I could say. Uh, I've had this jacket for 20 years. Uh, I wore it probably 10 years straight, uh, just to show you. It's a little big on me now. Uh, the previous jacket was a 44, as you saw, and this was a 46. Now keep in mind that if you're going to purchase a reproduction jacket, sometimes you wanna go up a size uh, because the 44 sizing is not today's 44 sizing or a 42 or a 40. Uh, they're slightly bigger, and keep in mind that back then they would have a, a sweater underneath it and they'd have their wool shirt underneath it and maybe even another shirt underneath it over this way and maybe even a, a, a coverall flight suit type thing and then they put this over top of it so it wouldn't be a form-fitting jacket that we would think of today where we'd want something that's tight and everything like this uh, so i'm going to show you this jacket. i'll just show you in the i don't have anything painted on the back but it's just a straight up uh, jacket now this isn't really rusted. This is a seal brown, but this was a seal brown that they did 20 years ago, uh, as you can see. Uh, so let's get it up on the rack and I'll show you close ups of this particular jacket. All right, so here is my first jacket, I should say, uh, or at least my oldest jacket of reproduction. Uh, as you can see, it still have the name tag. I added uh, this patch to it because uh, I liked it. Uh, but it didn't have any special connection to the unit. Um, here you can see the contract. And here it actually says Aero Leather Clothing Co. instead of manufacturer. Again, out of Beacon, New York. It's a size 46. Uh, also a 4215-142P. So it's basically the same jacket. But you can see the, the hide's different. It's a thicker hide. And it doesn't have near the grain. It's got, you know, a little bit popping here. But that's... There's not much grain everything else is pretty smooth you can see I've worn this jacket uh, where it's actually I I don't baby my leather jackets at all um, I know one of these cuffs has a has a, a little bit of a moth nip that opened up a little bit there but not too bad um, still pretty good this has a different talon zipper these were uh, what was available 20 years ago uh, of course, today's, uh, especially with the uh, Japanese remanufacturing all the talons and the hookless and uh, other vintage zippers like that, they've really come a long way from just stamping a talon on a piece of brass. Um, as you can see, um, show you similar. It's a similar jacket. There are no. Uh, hand warmer pockets on a, a real A2. So if you ever see one with hand warmers, that's not a real one. Uh, they all have uh, snap fronts. Um, and of course, this one has the uh, olive drab stitching. I think the other one does too. I'd have to double check on that. Let's flip her around. So here's the back. It really hasn't um, worn. I mean, there's no real grain grain. But you can see it definitely has gotten wet over the years where it's uh, here the wear is pretty heavy uh, but i really like this jacket too it's just a little too big for me now actually and i like the grain on the other one a little more i may sell this one eventually but right now i'm not uh if this is your size and you just can't live without this jacket let me know uh because right now it's just hanging up uh, collecting dust i guess so if you're thinking about getting a reproduction jacket, uh, particularly an A2 or even an A1, which is the predecessor to the A2, uh, there's three manufacturers I think of are kind of like the top tier. Uh, the number one, obviously, uh, if you're not aware of uh, uh, good wear leather, uh, uh, there or he, because it's a one-man band, has reproduced all the manufacturers for the most part, stitch for stitch uh, style of manufacture uh, perfectly. Uh, but he has like a two year waiting list and they're not cheap. Uh, just, you can't just like pick one up for a couple hundred bucks. They're 
in the thousands. Uh, but they are, if you want the best, that's it. If you want a, just a great uh, reproduction jacket uh, that's a little less uh, and you don't have to wait two years, uh, I would highly recommend Arrow, Arrow Leather out of Scotland, and also Eastman Leather, uh, although I think they're a little bit more than the Arrows are too. Uh, they've been both making uh, reproduction jackets for a really long time. Arrow's been making them longer. Uh, I think he started in the mid-80s when he started making the A2s. Uh, and then uh, Averex kind of came in there, and they were making them, but they weren't very accurate. Uh, there's a bunch of manufacturers that make them, and you can find them. Uh, even now, there's a lot of Chinese manufacturers that are making some pretty decent, at least what I've seen online, uh, favorable people talking about it. And there's also a lot of uh, smaller shops that make maybe one or two contracts available. Uh, but uh, the three that I mentioned are kind of the, the top tier, uh, Goodwear Leather, uh, Arrow, and Eastman. Uh, they make, and of course they make uh, not just the A2s, but they make a1s and they make uh, b3s which are the shearlings and they make the d1s with their shearlings and of course both arrow and uh eastman being british uh in that range uh they uh, are the uh they make uh the urban uh for the british uh at that time history wise uh the jacket has kind of a short history uh it kind of came in around i think 1931 and replace the A1. Of course, back then in, 19, in the 1930s, everything was uh, biplanes and that sort of thing, just coming out of World War I. Uh, they didn't really get into the major uh, bombers and fighters and everything that they had in World War II. And those jackets uh, lasted from, or officially lasted from 31 to about 43 when another jacket replaced this one. But that other jacket wasn't very easy to get to, so this jacket still continued on throughout the war. There's many pilots uh, and servicemen that started in World War II and had their jackets, and you were allowed to keep that jacket, and they continued in the military through the Korean War, still wearing their A2 jackets, and those were the old guys, I guess. I found a few over the years. I have one A2 original, that's in terrible shape. I, well, actually, I got it thinking I could restore it uh, as a, a wearer, but the leather was just too far gone, had too many issues, and it just wasn't worth it. Uh, but I have it. I won't show you that. I'll just show you the nicer ones. So I hope that gave you a little bit of insight into uh, what an A2 jacket is. Um, I highly recommend at least looking at them. It's kind of like a jacket that's it's not fancy, but it is fancy. Uh, but you can totally wear it with anything. Uh, don't worry about getting it wet. Don't worry about snow. Don't worry about dirt. Don't worry about scuffs. Uh, unless if you're that type of guy that does worry about that, uh, maybe you shouldn't have a leather jacket because things happen to leather jackets. We're like a cloth jacket. You don't notice that sort of thing quite as easy. I like a jacket, like I like a car. I like everything. I like a little bit of wear on it. I like to see I like to see that it was loved. Uh, and that's just, I like a jacket that's got some, some grit to it. Uh, but anyway, this is the A2 jacket. It's the World War II jacket. Uh, again, I showed you a couple places that you can pick one up. You can probably even find one if you go to your local thrift stores and stuff. You might find that uh, there's a brand called Cooper uh, that makes them. They're kind of like a entry level jacket, I guess you could say. Uh, reproduction might be worth looking at. You see if you like the, the fit of it. Because uh, each manufacturer too, as you get into it, uh, the different manufacturers have different fits. Kind of like Levi's fit different than Lee's, they fit different than Wrangler. Even though they make jeans, they have a different, they fit each person a little different. So if you can have an opportunity to try them on to see which ones you like, that might uh, be a good thing to do. So again, if you like this sort of content, it's kind of like a vintage stuff. Uh, I have all sorts of stuff. Uh, go through my stuff, you'll see a bunch of stuff. But if you like this sort of stuff, subscribe, uh, like, comment. Uh, again, I'm not an expert on any of this stuff. I just know a little bit to get in trouble and to give you kind of uh, stuff that I like. Uh, hopefully, maybe you like too. And if you don't know about it, maybe you will like it after I get uh, done with the video. So I'll see you on the next video.